دكتور برهام العبيدي ذا تشير ان ذا ديبارتمنت اوف اركيتكشر انجينيرنج ات يونيفرستي اوف بغداد many of his research projects and publications are focused on morphological development of Iraqi cities, particularly the urban forests. He is currently working with the team of the Engage Network and studying the problems uh, concern uh, conservation and awareness of cultural heritage in a wide framework in Iraq. This research project aims to develop a theoretical and conceptual framework of humanitarian heritage through co-production and co-creation with local community stakeholders and partner, partners. He received the Doctor of Philosophy and Master of Architecture degree with focus on urban planning from the University of uh, Kansas. Uh, thank you again for everybody. Uh, and uh, please, if you have uh, any question, uh, put your uh, question in uh, chat box and later in the end of the session we will discuss all your uh, questions uh, please Dr. Durham, uh, you will have 20 minutes for your uh, presentation thank you again and please Dr. Durham, mic is yours thank you Dr. Sabih for introducing me and many thanks for Dr. Jamal and his team and you as well to having me in this, uh, for having me in this great events. So, so Dr. Omar, just I would like to sh check. I share the, one second, please. Sure. Do you see something, Dr. Omar? I'm good with the uh, slides? Yes, the screen is You are good. Okay, so my presentation time, so it's challenging the opportunities of the heritage of Iraqi communities. And my name is Dirgam al as Dr. Sabih introduced me. So uh, this is a great theme, do more, get more. And uh, some of you or many of you may uh, won't agree with me about that, uh, even it is uh, a logical connection or a logical relation. I get back to this by uh, the end of uh, this presentation. So today uh, I'm gonna show you how I identify the challenge that impacted the Iraqi heritage and traditional communities. And then I'm going to describe how these communities can face these challenges and what are the ex existing opportunities uh, that we can rely on to say or to protect their heritage and their uh, traditions. Before getting started, I would like to share with you some facts. Uh, from left to right, more than 60 Sabian Mandais, or Sabian Mandayin families have left their inherited profession, which are gold smithing and uh, silver smithing industry. Then around 25 copper professionals or ostat in Arabic language have closed their shops, sold them out or turned them into another uh, profession like electronics or turn them into storage in the Sukh, uh, Shara uh, Nahar or Street Nahar and Old Baghdad, Rosafa side. Eight main old uh, bookstores, including their machines, were turned into new digital copy offices in Al Huish neighborhood in Old Najaf and in Al Mutanabi streets in Rosafa side. And, and lastly, uh, 20 uh, clay workshops or clay huts in which putteries do their stuff and sold them out. They have been renewed by the bulldozing many orchids due to the bulldozing, uh, many arcades and agriculture areas. So many groups of them left without job and without place. So such of these facts have been impacted greatly, the Iraqi heritage, and to go all of this and provide some challenge to describe the challenge and opportunities once again. I do that through my presentation, which consists of three main parts. First, I will introduce the topics, and then I will talk about the challenges and the opportunities. And finally, I will talk about some findings and conclusions. So why heritage matters? 
heritage program and practice practices have been a very positive influence of many aspects of the community gathers and develops and expands. Regeneration, economic growth, and community engagement are good examples of the ways in which heritage can make a positive contribution to the uh, to the life of these communities and traditional groups. It matters because the historic built environment and the traditional communities are proven sources of benefit to local economies, particularly through tourism. In addition, an attractive heritage environment sites assist in attracting external investment and maintaining the existing businesses of all types of these communities, not all, not just tourism related. After establishing the first Iraqi state in the 1930s, there were no real plans or agendas set up to preserve the Iraqi heritage due to facing the challenges of gaining the legacy for the new established state and also to unite, to unite the divided nation that inherited from uh, Ottoman Empire. This group then has uh, later individuals of Iraqi scholars returning from the uh, after finishing their studies in the West, returning to, to the country and contributed to support and conducted many programs of examination and discovery and rehabilitation of heritage buildings and archaeological sites. Then this group has contributed to formulate some regulation and policy embedded in the heritage law issued in 2002 in Iraq government. This law has not considered identity or locals and cultural groups and only supported and regulated their urban built environment. The method that I use in my research with my team and also under the supervision of Dr. Sabian, Dr. Jamal III, first the case study approach, which I selected for case study, Al Hwesh Souq and Najaf, and three the other cases were in Baghdad, Souq al Zahab or World Cemetery Souq, and then Pottery Industry in the urban edge of the city of Baghdad, and uh, Souq al Safafir. Then storytelling approach, which was very useful to hear from their stories, suggestions, interpretations about the change and development that had been occurred. The data collection offered perspectives and reveals hidden knowledge for the opportunities that we are looking for in this project. And the third one is a drive model. I talked about it in the next slides. So the case studies distributed among Baghdad, between Baghdad and Najaf, one in Najaf down here, and then another one in Baghdad, Rusafa side. Three of them were uh, developed and had developed expanded and growing based on the social, social cultural and special networks among organized families and neighborhoods, while the only one, so called the have all gold, this and industry of profession, was developed based on relatives, relatives and clans network. So each case study I used, it go through these phases, a quick historical background for each of them, and then the events, the most important events that impact these uh, uh, cases, and uh, I will end with the appraisal or evaluation of each of them. So Souq al was located in old uh, part uh, of Najaf, and it's far away, almost 15 to 20 minutes uh, from the Imam Ali Shrine, which is a recognized landmark in old Najaf. The Souq considers as the second uh, important uh, booksellers market after Antonabi Street in old Baghdad. And also many of shops uh, were distributed on the two sides on the, of uh, organic citrus and olives. Many of shops were uh, having uh, book binders, book sellers, and calligraphers. In addition to that, there are many uh, citrus vendors. They have been work uh, there for uh, many decades and they are still working. The second case, is Souq al Sufafir and old Rasafa uh, in Baghdad. It is one of the oldest markets in old Baghdad in which the cover products are made and sold. This souk has referred to one of the heritage landmarks that should be visited and become an attractive 
in place, just just for Iraqis, but also for Arab and foreign tourists. Yet, the conditions of of built environment and the place and infrastructure of this souk have been detroited, declined dramatically. Making copper utensils is one of the dominant profession there, and all Iraqi go there till now to buy or fix their stuff. The third one is the souk, uh, goldsmith souk or souk al-saga in all uh, parts of Rasafa and Baghdad as well. Another example of showing the sustainable heritage of traditional communities was called the smith or souk al-zahab, which inherited by monopolized generations over time, over many decades. The goldsmith souk has worked based on relatives, again, networks, which run by a group of families inheriting this industry. Its products are always attracted the foreign tourists and even Iraqis who are looking for getting golden stuff, golden pieces with a kind of uniques. The last case is uh, pottery industry, which is distributed around the two banks of uh, Digital River and Tigris River or Euphrates River. And in this case, the, uh, this profession is distributed in the urban age, in the periphery of the city, not in the core, unlike the rest cases. The industry is a traditional heritage as well product. It's separate uh, around the urban age. It has been relied on the salty clay and red oil saturated with rain world and other relevant materials which are found in this area. Potteries make their staff with a kind or a sense of passion and enjoyment. The second phase, the event I talked about with this infographic sheets or slides is very clear. I divided the periods based on the discussion with the team of Iraqi Hub. We have four phases, main forces, pre-colonization, colonization, and building nation or new states after the colonial power left the area and absolutely today or nowadays we are living the globalization. For the first phase we got from this phase only the antiques, manuscripts, archaeological site, the descriptions of the local communities, their networks were very rough. Globalization, there were many efforts conducted by Western missions, particularly the British, Germans, Italians and the French who, contrib French, who contributed to the exaggeration and discovery of many heritage, buildings, and archaeological sites during the British mandate and the Iraqi kingship. They were archiving many customs, traditions, rituals, practices by a photographic uh, approach. Building nation, this is the most important part, as you see in the slide. Here are many events, here were many events happened and impacted the Iraqi heritage. That phase was witnessed many dramatic changes and caused a lack of liability a lack of ceiling, contracting and transacting. Also turning historic areas in Iraqi cities into abundant areas. But the huge impact was made based on this research is China's market after 2000 to present. These events have been important, important reason which stood behind the disappearing or fading or ending of many traditional professions and products as well as the left of many traditional families. Lastly, globalization, the impact of media and digital culture on new generation have been maximized over time and over time. Appraisal, so quickly. Sukul so Ahwesh in Najaf is still working, but it needs, it needs the support from local government. Goldsmithery and industry has been suffered from the imported stuff or golden stuff come from Iran, Turkey, and Gulf states. A Safafir souk has been suffering from deterioration of built environment, and many shops were closed by their owners or sold out. Pottery, even the pottery, they do their job with a kind, as I told you, a sense of passion, but they don't want their new generation to follow their footsteps steps because they like to then give them good education and good lifestyle than the ones that they have. So here are some quotes 
I would like to share with you about these uh, communities. So I will move from first from uh, left to right. First from al -Hwish. We resist the change and preserve the profession of our ancestor, but we need governmental support. And the second one, our new generations have lots lost the love of passion and the passion of work, as I used to do. They are working hard to leave the country and being immigrants. The third one, I cannot work in a risky environment, risky place that does not um, protect me or my business. And the third one, I feel very sad because my profession that I inherited from my ancestor, ancestor is starting to be fading away and I cannot motivate my sons, my kids to follow my steps. The third method or techniques that that I use, we go to the literature to see the practices and the relevant works have done in the Levant land in the Gulf states, Egypt, Turkey, and uh, uh, Iran. Then a model which was derived from these relevant works in the regional communities, which are similar to the Iraq communities, have been applied to the four cases. But before that, again, this is. This is the uh, criteria that I uh, reclassify the practices and the models norms that they used in the regional scale. So based on character and identity, environmental quality, and uh, government uh, legislations. So most of them should be run and managed by the federal and local governments, and few of them, few of them, they should be uh, belonging to the communities and traditional uh, communities themselves. So apply these uh, uh, models, these uh, criteria on the Iraqi case, as you see in the chart, many uh, white or many hollow spots, as you see. So uh, we need to do a lot to meet the criteria that other countries have met. So the second part of this uh, work is the challenge and opportunities. So I go from one by one from left to right. The existing legal system was well structured to protect and conserve the tangible heritage of building and site. Comparative work and approach and system to deal with intangible heritage issues has not been existed or not been even tried to be. Iraqi academics, NGOs and donors should fill this gap and work together. New efforts dedicating for saving the Iraqi heritage didn't target the process of having or developing a new regulation and policy for the intangible heritage as it should be. This kind of collaboration will have a long-term value because it supports the local themselves. Older generations versus new generations. Unlike older groups, the new generation of cultural communities in Iraq, based on this research, are not too proud of being part of this cultural diversity of Iraq because of the deteriorated environment, because of the iconic selection of a lack, a lack of uh, sustainability. Instead, they feel that they are oriented globally and belonging to another kind of culture, a global digital culture. Professional groups and experts have to engage in building the trust and the government and NGOs, once again, should collaborate to set relevant programs for training and developing these endangered traditions and professions to let the new generation being proud of their uh, cultural diversity. Association between generations and government, both generations, the older ones and the young generation or new generation are not associated to the governmental agendas. And public participation in decision-making process is mostly quasi or pseudo. Representative should be, not must, should become from the same committees to have a real public participation in decision-making process which is very important to save their environment. Deterioration of uh, built environment, which is not proper for investment work at, at any kind of work. The opportunity that we have development of the historic cores and traditional community. So we need to have immediate actions for stopping the deterioration of these areas and then adapting well structured model and methods to prepare with built environment 
for returning the locals to work and to live there. We need to get people there. Yes, yeah, so the safety of those live people. Okay. Two more minutes, I will end up. So I will jump to the conclusions. You, you have- As you minutes. see here, it's very clear that the, the, okay, okay. So let me get back to this because I want, okay. Uh, uh, I will start with the last one. Okay, the duration, uh, domination of important goods, the China markets, we need to impose taxes and on imported goods to control the flow and also supporting the local traditional products by governmental programs, either local ones and federal ones. So I will run quick the, as a conclusion, as you see in the right side of the photos, like two or more uh, decades, the liability is, is very clear there. While in the second uh, photo on the left, as you see, a number of closing shops is very clear and this, the, the soup, the sofa pier and other markets in Baghdad tend to be abundant after 3 p.m. or 4 p.m. Another conclusion that is very important that ethno-religious uh, ritual practices have been interconnected strongly and passed from one generation to another, but or much more than other professions or traditions. So the ethno-religious connection is still fine. And you can see that by the practices which annually we witness. I would like to share this quote with you by Ricardo Salinas. Uh, sometimes big problems are best solved with uh, lots of small and creative solutions. So we have a new generation, new young groups. They uh, work, they work hard, and they don't belong to these communities. They have worked as an active part of community engagement and help them to get back to these traditions. Another group of new young historians, fortunately, the, those groups, I mean, were graduated by, uh, from the University of Baghdad. They started a new job. Since China's market is, dominant, is dominating totally on the uh, local market, they make a connection and they try to let them work with the traditional staff of Iraqis, as you see here. Other individual attempts are still uh, happening and they try to survive their profession. The conclusion, the legislation of Iraqi heritage does not cover the intangible heritage of cultural communities. Instead, they only focus on addressing the topics, issues, and matters of tangible heritage. The attempts and projects targeted the heritage of Iraqi communities conducted by civil society or NGOs do not make the impact for those communities and locals because they didn't meet any kind of regulation or a policy that enacted for this matter. That is why they keep going on archiving their heritage based on photos, maps, and sometimes research works. Supporting heritage of locals should go either levels to do new policy and regulation protecting intangible and tangible heritage. If I get to this uh, theme, do more get more, by do more I mean, do more investigation and studies in depth and with structural strategies and methods and tactics that derive from locals. So you will get more and more outcomes as I show you what happened with few groups from young uh, generations. We should put our efforts on studying and understanding the power our of stakeholders and locals in offering the opportunities and solving their problems on the basis of having small and creative solution. Thank you so much and pardon me if I get moments. Thank you.